Mr. Transformers 96 here with another custom video. This time I'm going to be showing off a just custom that I did of the Transformers The Last Night Voyager class uh, Nitro Zeus. So this is something that I've wanted to do uh, since it was first shown because there was a major issue with the figure, uh, in my opinion, based on its, you know, um, production images. So now that I finally did get it in hand, I was so lucky. I was able to find um, both of these at, uh, at Walmart. Uh, really didn't expect to find it. I went to one Walmart. They had score and got really excited. So I went to one more and they had a few nitros. I think there was even another one too. So uh, I got quite lucky and I'm quite happy about that. Nitro has been a figure that I've been uh, anticipating. It might be my most anticipated last night figure actually. So getting it in person, I knew I had to make some changes and get it a little bit more movie accurate. Uh, especially with that head sculpt. That's the biggest thing that I did here is obviously I gave him the shockwave head sculpt. Very different from the one that he comes with. Uh, the one that he comes with is really odd. Like I don't know if that was like a, um, a concept design for Nitro or what the deal is because it more resembles the KSI boss however it's not quite even that so you know it's kind of weird it's like it's almost the K KSI boss one but it's not so I don't know what they were thinking with that head sculpt um, but I knew that uh, obviously he has Shockwave's head sculpt in the movie, so I definitely wanted to give him Shockwave's head sculpt here. And I happen to have a spare Shockwave head, actually. Um, I bought uh, two Shockwaves, one incomplete one, um, back when Age of Extinction came, came out because I was thinking about doing a custom KSI Shockwave, the two-headed one, so I needed two heads. Uh, but I never ended up doing it, so I had a spare uh, Shockwave head that I could use, and uh, therefore that's what I put on. So just all the differences with this one compared to uh, the regular release is uh, the paint mainly. Um, I've added a lot of paint here. As you can see, all, all of the silver details I've added. So all of these little silver pieces. Let's see, get to the knee. All that stuff inside there on the side. All the silver stuff has been added by me. Even on the hands, little things like this. The corner. You can see under the head there's a lot of silver detailing silver at the guns there. I put a silver wash in the turbines to kind of make them pop. That actually looks really nice. I like it a lot. Uh, you know, silver rings on the weapon here. So everywhere, I just added a lot of silver details, and I just added them based on what I think would look nice. Obviously, there's lots of sculpted detail on him that's just not painted, so I just kind of used the silver to kind of make that detail pop, so that was my goal there. Then with the head, I, you know, Shockwave's head is obviously purple, so I had to paint his head. Um, just, I bought the paint for this before I even found the figure, uh, but I bought a white paint, um, just because, you know, based on the uh, uh, production images and stuff, you know, it looked like a white figure, so I was expecting, you know, white to be fine. Um, but I got it in hand and uh, it's more of like a grayish. It's not quite white. So what I did was I took my white paint and I mixed it with a gray to give it a more dullish white and that's what I used for the head um, which is definitely closer to the gray of the actual figure however it wasn't quite there so what I did was I painted a lot of the details in the same color that I did of the head and therefore to just kind of tie it all in together so that the head didn't feel out of place but as you can see just all of this detail all of the slightly whiter gray on the figure I've added myself you can see the chest is the best area to demonstrate this because I've just painted like the middle sections that white and left the side sections that gray so you can kind of just see them there on the shoulders on the sides here this little section little pieces right here so just you know I just painted all of that stuff um, I just I went based on the actual uh, sculpted lines on there and just kind of uh, painted all that detail I've added a lot you know here here so th there's a lot of places that have that white but it kind of it helps tie it all in together and therefore makes the head even though it's a slightly different color than than some of the areas on his body it still ties it in so it doesn't look like it's out of place or anything then I've added red details I added the red details here uh, which is accurate. All of the red details are in accurate places. And then on the missiles, I added the red at the very top and, as you can see, at the uh, center section of those missiles. And then after all of that, um, I also, one thing I did was he has like a little tail section here. I just popped that off. It's very easy. It's just on a little friction joint, so you can pop it off easily. Um, so I just popped that off because I don't transform my, uh, my custom figures. I just have no uh, need to, and I've got a spare one if I want to transform it. Um, so I just popped that off to, you know, make it look nicer. Uh, and then my last thing was I added the chain. Uh, the chain was something I definitely wanted to do because he obviously has a chain necklace in the movie. Uh, 
and I just went to the same place where I got the paint, Hobby Lobby, and I found like a chain necklace that looked like it was just about the right type of thing, and I bought it and then, you know, sized it myself to make it a bit smaller, and I, uh, I'm pretty sure that that's a, a pretty good uh, size, accuracy-wise. I think that works very nicely. And on the back of his head, I did leave... See if you can see it a bit there. I did leave a section of the back of his head, that translucent red, so that the eyes will still light up, or the eye will still light up a bit, um, based on the, you know, light piping, so, because I, I definitely wanted to keep that feature. So, I, you know, for now, I'm done. I might continue and do a little bit more. There's some detailing on his back, like on the back of the legs and feet. There's some nice detailing there that I didn't really mess with. I didn't add any silver or any white to that, um, but I certainly could see myself going back and adding some silver details there. Uh, and then also, um, uh, in the movie, what he has is he has tattoos. Uh, they're like graffiti uh, on his shoulders. He's got, um, in particular, a lot of yellow graffiti writing on his right shoulder. Uh, and I just haven't added that because it's kind of, it's hard to do, you know? I don't want to do it and because I, I need to make it look sloppy, but I don't want it to look like I just it's sloppy because I didn't do a good job, you know? So uh, even though it's supposed to look sloppy, so I'm just worried about how that could turn out. And not to mention, it's hard to tell from the movie shots where the graffiti is and exactly what it says um, because uh, there's just, there's not many good shots of Shockwave. There's no like, eight, or sorry, I mean Nitro. There's no like HD shot of Nitro from the movie. There's a lot of little glimpses and a lot of pretty good shots of him from clips I found and things like that. So it's hard to get the exact writing down. And therefore, I'm going to wait a little bit. Hopefully, when this movie comes out on digital, uh, we'll get HD shots of him, and I can really see exactly what it's supposed to look like, and maybe I can do a little practice first, and uh, and then go for it. So, we'll see. I might not be done with this Shockwave, but for now, I am. Also, how I connected the head, I'm sure people are wondering that. Um, if you have the Shockwave figure, or you have the Nitro figure, you'll know this. The, um, the the head is able to be removed from the body, like it's actually meant to be removed, uh, and then there's just like a little square section that goes into the body, there's a ball joint that goes into the head, uh, the ball joint you can remove easily, you just unscrew the head and then the head splits in two, and the ball joint comes out. Same thing with Shockwave, you, you unscrew the head, it splits in two, and that's how you can get it off the Shockwave figure, and I just put that ball joint inside the Shockwave head, uh, screwed it back together so it, you know, fits in nicely, and then you just plug it right back into this. So, I basically just use the joint from Nitro and just put it in the Shockwave head essentially. Um, so it can still be removed just like the Shockwave. The only thing is it's not very tight. There's not much going on there so like it doesn't hold a pose or anything. But if I tip this upside down the head would not fall off. So it's in there securely where it's not going to fall off. It's just it's not strong enough to hold a pose. Um, I might go in there and like put in some paper or something just to uh, just to tighten it up a bit. But for now that's how it is. So uh, yeah it doesn't bother me with the fact that it's uh that's it's a bit loose i was actually thinking that uh, i wasn't going to be able to do that i was thinking that i might have to actually glue it on so i was very pleased to see how nitro's joint worked it was uh, better than i expected so there you go that's my uh, that's my custom nitro zeus figure um Hope you guys enjoyed this. I enjoyed making it, and it was something that I definitely wanted to do to make uh, this character more movie accurate, as I am quite a big Decepticon fan. I wanted this to uh, to look as good and, and as movie accurate as possible. So here he is with Megatron, you can kind of see there. And then if we throw in another custom uh, Decepticon that I did, we've got a, a barricade. This is all actually pretty nicely uh, done size comparison wise. Um, the leader Megatron really fits with all the Decepticon figures very nicely. So uh, coming up next, I do have a custom Mohawk. Give you, give you a little glimpse of it, a little, little tease. Uh, yeah, I'll be posting that, um, that video talking about my custom Mohawk uh, pretty soon here. And then I have started a custom uh, Dreadbot, and then I'm preparing to do a custom Onslaught as well as Crankcase, or not Crankcase, Crowbar. So uh, those are my future customs that I'm doing and the videos that you can expect and uh, look forward to. So there you go, that's my custom uh, Nitro Zeus figure from Transformers The Last Night. Let me know what you guys think of it, and thanks so much for watching.